You know what? I'm a lazy guy. I find it a massive effort to put such a long distance between each gear change. So in today's video, I'm going to fit a short shifter kit to my car. I'm going to show you the full process for it. And I'm going to see if this kit is such a game changer. How's it going? I'm Kev and welcome to North Coast Workshop where we'll find content on car modification and DIY. In today's video what we're doing is fitting a short shifter kit to my Cupra R here. It's a kit I've had in the garage for over a year now and I'm finally getting around to fitting it to the car. So the short shifter kit is meant to be one of these kind of game changing modifications to your car. It's meant to improve the drivability of the car massively for a relatively small cost. So we'll see how true that is at the end of the video. So the short shifter kit I've got for my car today is from WG Motor Parts. I'll leave a link to the website down below in the description. I think Forge Motorsport do one as well. A bit more expensive than my one, but it's up to yourself which one you go for. I also do a quick shout out to Rick, an Instagram follower of mine who's got a Mark V Golf GTI. I think he lives in the US of A. US of A? <laughs> USA. And he showed me some pictures I sent through, which I'll put on the screen just now, of a really smart looking short shifter kit that he fed. It was a lot more expensive than this one, but I think you're paying for the quality and the precision and the way it's made. He also says the feel of the gear stick inside once it's fitted is amazing as well. What a difference. So I'll leave a link of the website, check that out on as well. If I can find it, I'll pop that down below in the description as well. So before we start any kind of modifications yet, what we're going to do is take a before distance for third and fourth on the gear lever to see how far it travels just now. And then we'll do another measurement at the end between third and fourth to see how much of the distance has been reduced by. And if it's way too short or stiff, no knob jokes in the comments please. Then what we can do is we can adjust it on the actual kit itself, under the bonnet there, and this should then affect this accordingly and hopefully just set it up just right. This is the way we're going to measure the difference between third and fourth gear. So the first one, we've got 92 mil here, and then pop it back into fourth, and we've got 193 mil. So to get the short shifter kit fitted, what we need to do is get the induction kit out of the way, or any pipework for your air filter that you need to remove. Get that out of the way first. We're going to remove the battery and the battery tray, and that then gives us full access to the top of the gearbox where the short shifter kit will get fed. So the tools you need for this is a socket set that includes an extension and a ratchet, a wire brush, some assorted spanners, a hammer, a 5mm drill bit, a wood bit if possible, a trim removal tool, a washer, some copper grease, penetrating fluid and brake cleaner. So first up I'm going to take off the Jubilee clips for my forge induction kit. Then remove the bolt for the battery bracket. Then with a 10mm socket, take off the terminals for the battery. Always take off the negative terminal first and then the positive, not the way I've done it here. Then I've cleaned up the top of the bolts with a wire brush here and then sprayed some penetrating fluid on them. Some bolts come out easier than others as you can see, so it just persists until you get them all out. Now with the battery cover out of the way, I used a wire brush to clean up the top of the threads on this bolt here and again spray some penetrating fluid. And while that was soaking in, I went inside the car and removed the gear gator. This is held in with clips at the front, so if you remove the back edge of the gear gator first, it will come off a lot easier. Then using a 5mm wood drill bit, I fixed the gear lever in place through the two holes. Then on the gearbox there's a locator pin which you need to push upwards and inwards at the same time and this holds the gears in place. Now I didn't do this correctly at the time, you need to make sure that you're kind of moving the gear linkage on the top to try and get this pin to fully rotate and push in. As you'll see for the next while, the gear linkage is still moving quite a lot and this wouldn't happen if you get that pin located correctly. Now we take off the nut that's holding the top of the gear linkage on and we're looking to remove these bushings that are held on with these retractable springs. Now as you can see I broke this white clip here, it goes very brittle with age so luckily it didn't need to get reused and I've got new clips to put in place. Then next with a small screwdriver remove this wee spring clip here. And again retract the spring on this bushing and just lift it up and then you can just pull it straight off. 
And this one here, I just levered across the way with a screwdriver and then pushed the rest off with my hand. Now to get this top gear linkage off, I just was hammering down carefully, as carefully as possible, on top of the thread so it fell through the bottom of the linkage. Then a quick clean up and a spray with some brake cleaner. And then just rotated this last part of the linkage over to the back and then pulled out to the side. And then one final clean with a rag and then just blew some of the dust away with compressed air. So we've got our old linkage here, I'm just looking to see what size pin that came with the new kit that I need to replicate the same size pin as the one on the old linkage. And then fit this pin to the new linkage and secure it in place with a nut on the back and then just use two spanners in combination to get this tightened up. And this is where I've located it to make it a lot shorter. If you have it on the far left instead, this will make it the same as the one on the original linkage. Next I remove the slider from the old part of the old linkage and just give it a good clean with brake cleaner and I wouldn't advise spraying this all over your fingers like I have here. Once it's all cleaned up, I'm just making sure that it fits onto the new linkage okay. I then add some grease to it and then stick it on top of the new linkage. I remove the retaining clip from the top of the new linkage, pull off the first plastic collar but leave the second one in place and then I'm just again measuring up these new pins to make sure they match the diameter of the original pin on the old linkage. Once the right one's located, just again the same as the previous one, just use two spanners to tighten it up. And here I'm just checking the bushings from the gear linkage to see how they are. There's a lot of side to side movement, the bushings are quite badly worn, so I'm going to order two new ones and at some point change them later on because this will also affect how the gear changes feel in the car. So now to fit the short shifter kit levers back into place, so we're doing in reverse order, so the shorter one first. This goes back into the side and then we just add the plastic bushing from the other side and then hold it all in place with the metal retaining clip. Then on the other lever just add some grease here and then just be aware there's a wee flat spot inside here that matches up with a flat spot on the bolt that comes out of the gearbox and these just line up and they make sure it's all in line. Now I have got the nut back on top of the bolt holding this lever in place but it's going to get removed shortly and I'll explain why. Now to put these bushings back on so just pull back the spring then slide it over the long bolt and then line it up with the new short shifter lever, slide it over the pin on there and use the metal retaining clip to hold it in place. Same for both of them and just make sure each time that the plastic on the end of the spring is fully returned downwards. Now as you can see there's a lot of up and down movement in this lever here and this is why we can't just leave it as it is. This is going to have problems when you're changing gear so if you remove this nut and just pop on this wee washer so a maximum of 20mm diameter, pop it on top and then just screw the nut back down on top and just make sure when you tighten the screw up that you don't over tighten it and risk snapping the bolt from the gearbox because this is a serious issue if this happens. And as you can see it's greatly reduced the rocking of that short shifter lever. Then I just spray some copper grease on the bolt and the retaining clips just in case I have to take them off again in future. Then finally pull the retaining pin out of the gearbox so pull it outwards and twist downwards and also the wood drill bit inside the car, make sure you pull that out of the gear lever. Then you want to have a quick check to make sure you can select every single gear and also make sure you check reverse as well. So now to do our measurements to check to see how much has adjusted the distance. So we've got 111mm for it being in third gear and then 188mm in fourth gear. 
And the difference now between the two distances is about 24 millimeters. And this is a 23% reduction in the distance traveled between third and fourth gear. And reassembly is just straightforward enough. It's just the reverse of how we took it apart. Just making sure you put copper grease on the bolts for the battery tray. This just makes sure they come out easier again in future. Again, spring the top of the bolts with some copper grease as well. Make sure you reattach your battery bracket. Then putting your terminals back on so it's your positive first tightened up. And then your negative. And then finally, your induction kit, whatever make you have. So that's all fitted and it's all working perfectly. I've had a quick spin around the block. I would have filmed some of that, but it's pitch black outside. It's half past midnight just now. And it's also snowing as well, which is expected in April, obviously, in Scotland. But yeah, it's all working perfectly. The gear changes are massively improved. I was actually shocked how much better it felt as well. So yeah, it is a game changer, like I was saying. Definitely worth the money to do this modification on your car. Just make sure when you're doing it though, as you saw a few problems when I was doing the installation myself, make sure you definitely lock that gear stick in place properly. Don't have any movement there at all. So use that five mil wood screw that I used. And in the transmission, make sure that pin in the transmission is locked into place properly. I had mine about three quarters of the way in, so there's still some movement. If there is any movement between the gear lever and the transmission when you're putting it all back together again, this will cause problems then. You probably have problems where you can't select any gears or you can select half of them and not the other half. So definitely make sure they're both locked in position and that will save any issues at all. Like I said, it's half past midnight and the place is an absolute tip. I want to go to bed, but I want to tidy this place up first just so I know it's done and dusted for the night. But thanks again for watching, it's much appreciated. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. It's down there in the corner if you're on mobile, remember. Also hit subscribe down below as well if you want to catch more videos from the channel in the future. And talking of more videos, my next video that I'm planning on doing is the changing the gearbox oil. So if I have done that video, I will pop it up here in the corner so you can watch that next. Or down below if you want to catch the video regarding mods you can do to your car. Thanks again for watching, much appreciated, and I'll catch you later. Bye bye.